Boom. Hey, Internets, I had a good question that was emailed to me. Uh, easiest way for you guys to get at me is to text me. I have a number associated with my YouTube and my Facebook and my uh, Instagram. Uh, that number actually comes directly to my, my phone. It's a business account. That's really me texting you guys. Um, in any case, in any case, one take Drake, um, this subscriber was, was talking about the request for big and tall uh, for his clothing line. So my question is, how do I deal with big and tall customers? Do I set up a big and tall section? Hmm. Uh, is the pricing going to be more because of the shirts uh, going to be more expensive? Um, how do I deal with the pricing aspect of that? Okay. So I'm going to deal with this in two parts. First, I'm going to actually answer the question. How do you deal with the category of big and tall? Um, and then another and then and then I'm going to give you commentary on 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 my actual thoughts on the need of this for your brand. Now, I don't know this brand intimately. Um, when you say, should I add it to your section? I'm like, are you big enough where you actually have a merchandised area in like a shop? Because if you do big ups, you're doing some really good things. You should consult me on the next level because I'm trying to find my top four. Uh, and, and if you're subscribed to the channel, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so big and tall. Uh, back in the heyday when people were really spending, I'm talking about late 90s, I'm talking about early 2000s before the uh, big mortgage crunch, everyone was spending like crazy. So there were actually some brands that all they did was exclusively deal with big and tall customers. And that is actually more of a demand in the United States. I don't know if that says anything about our diet in general here, um, but um, or maybe we just like things bigger. It's true. I mean, uh, when I travel to Asia uh, or, or South America, you see that things are a little bit more at human scale, which which I call practical. But um, sort of like Texas, we like things bigger in the United States. So big and tall is a, is actually a pretty thriving category uh, in the United States, and and I actually dealt with. Um, some brands where they needed to expand to that category because they would appeal to a big and tall customer, right? Um, and so pricing. It will cost more for big and tall. So uh, if you have an account with a blank company, you'll see that if you have, if it offers, if it offers like a really like a 5XL, 6XL, anything where you're getting way past a 3XL, um, you're getting into big and tall category, they're gonna have a different number for that because you're literally using more yardage of fabric, okay? That, that's a whole nother cut you have to do. So if you had to do a double extra small, it's just not normal, so then that's a whole nother set of patterns and fabric. But when you're going the other direction and it's bigger, it's literally using more fabric for each garment. So the way that you might do your projections in terms of how many garments a fabric yard will yield or a meter will yield, um, you, you put that into the equation when you're trying to figure out like costing, right? So if you have a vendor that's doing it from A to Z from fabrication, cutting, and then garment assembly, I mean, they're gonna put that into the mix as well. So is it gonna cost more? The short answer is yes. Do you charge more? You could. So um, the companies that have big and tall as as a big part of their business, they're not gonna charge less money for a small, they're just gonna put it into the equation and see what kind of margin that they need for that garment and price accordingly. Does that make sense? So they're gonna keep one price, but you know that you're gonna eat it a little bit on your, your bigger items, okay? Um, brands that I've worked for before who would offer a program of big and tall only for a few uh, customers, and when I say a few customers, it's still, you're still able to produce like 200 pieces per design, per colorway, right? So uh, when when we're talking about that, it's kind of an add-on to your order, right? So you have your entree and then you're adding like mashed potatoes or a side or whatever, or you're sizing it up. So they will offer that and have different pricing for that because it's almost like a special order, okay? So that's how you do it. Big and tall, that's how you do it. Um, the specs and stuff, uh, I'm getting a little bit more technical, but you would create that the way you're creating the specs for all of your other fits. So so you're gonna have to size grade that and check it, et cetera, et cetera, okay? The last part that I wanna talk about is my thoughts on it. So, 
different from the actual execution of that. I talked about the execution. I'm gonna say most of the brands, 90% of the brands, 90% uh, of you guys are startups, okay? So 90% of you guys do not need a big and tall program. When you say that people want it, give me a number or tell me how many people are really requesting that. Because if you're telling me that it's like 20 people, what is 20 people versus how many people are actually patroning and consuming your product? Um, if that's less than 1%, then it's just like someone telling you you need to do every single piece in like fuchsia or in like neon green like you you don't want to do every single piece in fuchsia or neon green because it's it's too much of an outlier it's too much of a fringe product um so you might get swayed when people give you requests for a lot of different things or everyone's going to give you an advice a piece of advice when it's not their clothing line and they're not putting money into it. Everyone's gonna say, you should do this. If you did this, you'd sell out. You'd sell hundreds, you'd sell millions. But the real, the reality of what happens is you're gonna have to test the products you put out on your your best guess and you might be listening to some people and you 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 need to be listening to your gut as well what you think is going to perform well and when i say perform well i mean sell i mean actually sell to people who aren't your family or friends um you're gonna have to test the product and see what people respond to because what people like on a post is definitely not equal to what people will um hit the buy button for okay it's a different audience so do you need to have a big and tall or any other thing that people are requesting for in that example? Probably not. So the numbers will speak for itself in that scenario. Just want to offer that as a piece of advice, which I would have done beforehand, but I just wanted to give you a real answer on how to deal with the category of big and tall uh, for your clothing brand. All right. Hope that helps. Any questions you guys have, you already know, drop it all down below. Follow the kid on social media when you get a chance. I'm going to see you guys on the next video. Later, internets.